Good morning. Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you're having a good worship day today. I still stayed home for worship and am still worshiping the Lord, but uh, I was going to share another dream with you in a scripture. <clears throat> and uh, maybe some of you have made it to church today. I know we had a few in my area. The Sunday school wouldn't be open where all the children could be close together, but the church service would be open. So praise the Lord. I just pray Holy Ghost outpouring on those that are able to meet together and <clears throat> Holy Ghost outpouring on those of us that are at home. We can have a very special time with the Lord as we seek His face and worship Him and uh, play our worship music and just uh, let our hearts meet with His he is a good and wonderful God. He is faithful, and He loves us very much. Yes, Jesus loves me. It's one of my favorite songs through the years to sing to children and grandchildren, and Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And then uh, go back at Him with, Oh, how I love Jesus. Sing Him from my heart to Him. And uh, pray that you're finding all those good worship songs. Well, I am going to share a dream, and then we'll share a scripture. <clears throat> this dream, it was kind of going along the line of the others, like end time things. And uh, <clears throat> we aren't supposed to be in fear, and we don't share these things to bring fear. But as Christians, we do have to be aware of times, and we are in end time things. And it's uh, still God's timing on things. He can uh, <clears throat> draw back the momentum that the enemy is uh, forwarding any time he chooses. And um, it's a good idea for us to be in repentance and prayer because he hears those prayers. And uh, we need to pray for our country and our leaders and the people of the nations that they will repent and draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to them if they have true repentance. And repentance means changing. You've got to change things. can't stay in your sin and love God. You've got to let go of the sin. Drop it off at the foot of the cross and start walking with the Lord. And obey Acts 2.38. If you happen to be someone coming to this channel that uh, needs the Lord, you need some information on how to get there, Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, I'm going to share this dream with you. It kind of had, uh, like, you know, flash scenes of things happening, and, uh, you know, we hear about things where people um, get brought together in a place and confined, etc. So that's kind of how this dream is. It just looks sort of like an old hotel with a large lobby and a large room for an eating area. And in one scene, I was uh, by myself going to the counter of this eating area, kind of like a cafeteria thing. And uh, I was going to get a tray of food, I thought, but there was nothing left. And... Um, you know, other people were had left there, and they had been served, but there was nothing for me. And uh, I sensed that I had deliberately not been notified of the correct time to come to pick up that meal. And the next is uh, kind of at an event, like an evening event you're required to go to, and I would say it's probably an indoctrination type event, although I didn't see anything like that going on. What I observed was two men sitting down from me, like on bleacher type things, and uh, one pulled a container of food out of the inside of his coat and smiling at the man next to him, gave it to him. And then when he saw me looking, he got a hard look on his face, stopped smiling, <clears throat> and looked straight forward. And um, <clears throat> so that was that little scene there. And uh, the next scene was a woman that I had gone to church with in the past, and she was avoiding me. And at one point she did make eye contact, but the message in that eye contact was 
stay away from me. <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, I was just feeling kind of like, you know, in herds, if you've ever watched uh, documentaries and things about the animal kingdom, if one gets weak or sick, uh, the others begin to ostracize it. And it's probably a natural way to avoid the disease. They begin to, they'll butt their head into it to shoo it off while it's weak, and they will leave it behind and move on. And that's kind of how I was feeling in this dream. I was uh, uh, a problem. I was a problem because I believe in Jesus. And I'm going to stand for him. And uh, they didn't want to be connected with me because that would be a problem for them. And we, we know that the Word of God tells us that in the end times there will be even your family members turn on you and uh, so, you know, people look out for themselves. And if you don't have God in you where you're serving God, you will do that, you know. But uh, Christians are getting strong in faith, and we're serving Jesus. And uh, whatever comes, and this is just a dream, I do feel it was from the Lord. I, I feel like he's just telling me these times are near doesn't mean tomorrow but we do see situations happening where they're testing the waters trying to see how well they can herd us together and do things and uh, <clears throat> but everything in God's timing and in his hands what he allows and the enemy is only allowed to do what the Lord allows him to do but we have uh, the prophecies in Revelation that tell us how the end times will be and it won't be good. We we pray for redemption. We pray for the Lord and we know Psalm 91 protection over us that he won't let anything come nigh us um, if we are his. We are safe in the Lord and we just need to stay safe in him. I know I had texted a former pastor this morning giving him a song, and he texted back about he'd been humming, um, Jesus, hold my hand, and I texted back, well, my, I'm keeping my hand firmly in his, and uh, he'd texted back that he'd walked with his granddaughter, and she came up to him and said, Papa, hold my hand, and he said, melted my heart. Well, that's how the Lord feels when we decide to put our hand in his. Well, that was kind of the dream, and it reminded me of uh, some Holocaust strategies. I've read books about the Holocaust, and, you know, when they began to do things, they would confine the Jewish people to a set space, and they would put strangers together, like in my last dream, where you don't know who's coming in your house next. You had to have your papers in place, and they would be real abrupt with you, so there was this intimidation and fear and uh, are you an essential worker? You've heard that, haven't you? Essential workers. Mm -hmm. And um, they would lie about where they were taking them. When they got ready to put them on a train, they were moving them out of the way of the enemy during the war. And, of course, that was not the truth. They were taking them to some terrible camps, some of which were death camps. And, um, you know, they would, from the books I read and stuff, they would... Uh, they would strip people down and have them run around to see who was uh, healthy and uh, worth keeping alive to work. So these were terrible times, terrible things. And um, so they would keep the strong and the weak would be gone. Well, <clears throat> you know, you basically became chattel. You became property. You were like slaves. But even among that, you know, there were people that would learn how to work. They wanted to survive, so they would learn how to kind of work the system. And, uh, you know, even though you didn't feel like being amiable with these people that were mistreating you, some of them would learn to uh, be amiable and pleasant. So uh, it was kind of a joke in, in a way, but they learned how to work that system. And... Um, you know, I thought of a quote by Patrick Henry. I know not what others may 
choose. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. A very famous quote from a speech that he gave to the Second Virginia Convention on March 23, 1775 at St. John's Church in Richmond, Virginia. So this is when the colonists are being um, stirred up. There will have to be a revolution to break free from England and become our own nation here. And in 1776, that did happen. Um, I have visited books by Corrie ten Boom. She was, her family hid Jews during the Holocaust. She was, she and several of them were imprisoned for it. Her father and sister died in those camps. And um, so she has a book that tells interesting times there. Eli Wiesel, it's E-L-I-W-I-E-S-E-L. It's a Jewish man that lived during those times. He and his father were imprisoned together. He wrote an autobiographical book called Night, Night, and of his and his father's experiences in the camps during the Holocaust, which is an interesting read. I'm just telling you about those, but you know, our main read is the Word of God. And uh, that's what we're going by. He's let us know things that will happen. But from history, we see things repeated, even from the history recorded in the Bible, how things were done by the Pharaoh in Exodus, how things were done by Herod during Jesus' time, um, down through the years, over and over, genocides. You know, I had watched a film one time about the genocides in Rwanda, and it just is amazing how this fervor and mob mentality can pick up against people that don't look like you look or don't think like you think or are a problem for you in some way or the other. And um, let's read Matthew 10, 28 through 42. And fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing, and one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear ye not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only, in the name of a disciple, verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. Thank you, Lord. We praise and worship and glorify your name. Jesus, you are our King, King of kings, Lord of lords. Help us to be faithful. When you return, we want you to find faith on the earth. Increase our faith, strengthen and give us courage and boldness. And I pray over the saints and ministers, Father, and over their families. Bless each one. I pray for the lost. Bring them in, Jesus. In your holy name, amen.